his goals were different. His, the modus operandi and vivendi, the way you live out this vision, the way you achieve this vision, they are, st they are at loggerheads. They do not fit upon the template of what they had conceived in their own minds or what their contemporaries were uh, anticipating. So tonight onwards we'll see there's a lot of clash, clash of ideas between what Jesus envisages and what the, what the uh, apostolic team originally understood. That is how this is a two-stage healing. Uh, like the, like the, the healing of uh, correction of vision at Bethesda. It is two stages. So there is a progressive revelation that we see taking place here. Now, Namla Kartavinde e Atrail Kuda Pumor Namuka Manslav Murigari Kartava Udeshichidum Bibhavan and Jedu Allah Shishin Mar Manslaki Guru Prasangan Rashi and Maria Kelvikar and Verna Manslan Pum Namalati Paramanisa Vaja Garmana Udeshichilla Kelvikar and Manslakan. Adole, Karta would desich the Iverajum, the Iverajatile, Angatum, as in the Ridigalum, Allah, Shishin Mar, Pradichilum, Parishilum. Adana, Ude, Bell Style, Manchin de Kalcha, Manishere, Marangale Pole, under the Volian, Kanada, Alpasulpan Kalchi under Vectamai Kalchi, one little. Ah, Puroga Manevermaya, Darshanath in the Tiritalana. Yes, uh, Anup, can you take us to the next slide, please? Uh, in today, tonight's uh, emphasis will be from 8.27 to 9.13 in Mark's Gospel. So please keep your Bibles open at uh, Mark 8.27. 27 to 30 is the great confession of Peter, representing the apostolic team. From here onwards, there is a major shift in Mark's gospel. Scholars usually say that before 827, the first part of Mark's gospel is uh, presenting Jesus as a very glorious figure. They call it the Christology of glory. As a miracle-working, sharp-witted messiah, who has everything under control. It is that glamorous uh, personality that is being uh, highlighted. But then from 827 onwards, the emphasis changes, the tone of the gospel changes. So some scholars say from here onwards, the emphasis lies on uh, a theology of the cross. Adiya Bhaganali, Mahima Vanaya, Mahotogar Ramaya, Alpurangale Chena, Uru Kustuaniana, Parcosa, Vivavan and Jena in the real. Eighteen day, River Theatre, Mother La Pagangal Nam, Kubor, Kashtam and the Vivikina, Tidaskari Chapadana, Peter the Naya, Urimisia, Jitramana, Marcosa, Varchkani. Why does he do this and all? There are lots of explanations. Uh, we'll see this uh, as we proceed. So in tw verses 27 to 30, we find the confession of the early church that Jesus is the Messiah. That is the first basic confession of their faith. We'll look at it a bit more. Then verses 31 to 33, we find Jesus affirms it, but radically redefines it. The, and he predicts that he is as the Messiah he accepts, but in a redefined way. Chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10, each of these chapters, towards the end of it, there is this uh, text, a collection of verses, which predict the forthcoming 
sufferings of Jesus. So I've listed it for you. 831 to 33, 930 to 33, and 1030 to 34. The, these passion predictions uh, uh, function as kind of lenses. Now, the, just as our vision is progressively being corrected, uh, the the author is adjusting our glasses. Like you go to an ophthalmologist, and uh, you know uh, the doctor has a computerized test, but it is a fine tuning. Uh, it, it, they, they will insert different minor variations of the lens and adjust the angle to see which suits you best. In India, that last final stage uh, done, is done by an optometrist who, who has especially trained for that. Now, what we find in these passion predictions is an underlining, uh, an alarm bell, but look at it through the cross, look at it through the passion of Jesus. Let the cross become your, your eyes through which you look at what is being narrated. Karthavinde Pidhani Bhavan Ada Manasila Kanaitu Ada Avarada Bothangalil Padipikuanaitu Ada Matralla Karthavinde Pidhani Bhavatil Kude Tande Taniki Veruan Bona Kastani Bhavatil Kude Ana Nam Devarajatayim, Adin de Ridigalay, Manasilak and the Yen, our teach, our teach, Adivarid in the night on a E moon predictions, you would a decapitary. And then, of course, Mark eight thirty four to nine one, we have Jesus uh, taking, you know, he says, This is the kind of Messiah I am going to be. But then, what does it mean to follow me? So he gives this. Big challenge, all time challenge, genuine discipleship to Jesus, authentic, bona fide walk with Jesus is the way or the cross. It's called the Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. You walk with Jesus behind Jesus. We'll come to it and look at it. And then, of course, in 9 2 to 13, Jesus as a wonderful teacher who knows his, his early hearers have a genuine difficulty in understanding it, gives them a, a preview of what resurrection is. We look at it also as we proceed. Tande Shishin Marke, Tande Upadeshan Grihikwan, Putthimut Vandhanal, Kartava, Avarke, Kati Kodukiyana, uh, will you please take us to the next slide, please? Thank you. Namla in the Chitrangal Kandagana Mairium, Namla Anub, it may not be possible to point. Uh, yes, thank you, Anub. Galila Kadal, come down with a pointer, please. Get Sea of Galilee, please. The Sea of Galilee, yes. And Bethesda is at the northeast corner. Can you show them Bethesda, please? Anup, can you take your pointer? And then uh, what happens is the, the, the event of confession takes place in a place called Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi is about 25 miles north of Bethesda. And, and uh, in ancient days, it's a very, very long trek. They say even to now, uh, this 25 miles is almost an hour's drive because of the road conditions. Uh, so this uh, Caesarea Philippi uh, is called Caesarea Philippi to distinguish it from another Caesarea, you know, where Paul was arrested and kept. That was the, the, the port of Caesarea. It's called uh, Caesarea by the seaside. 
Now that was built by Herod the Great. Now this particular city was renamed as Caesarea or Caesarea Philippi by Herod the Great's son, Herod Philip. Uh, and Herod the Great had built on the remains of an ancient uh, temple, uh, a new white marble temple to uh, Augustus Caesar. The name of the city earlier was Panias. It's the center of pagan worship. There are all kinds of idols and the most significant idol here would be that of the reigning emperor. Chakravarti Maharade Aryathana Gendramayad Paniyasamna Puradhana Stalat Herodava Uru Devalayam Paniyagin Adhinayathande Putran Vibili Gerich Patrana Deshate Muruvan Vibili Gerichi in Chidu Thira Deshatula Turamukha Patrana Maya Herodavu Paniyya Kaisiriyakya Nandun Thirichar Yuvanai Idhine Philippos in the Kaisaria in the period again. It is in this spot that Jesus, Jesus uh, reveals himself, begins to reveal himself and journeys towards, journeys towards Jerusalem. Now, this is at kind of at the foothills of Mount Hermon. Uh, so uh, Jordan is a lifeline of uh, of uh, and Sea of Galilee as a lifeline of um, Judea's and Galilee's water supply. Okay. Who do people say that I am? In the ancient world. Can you take us to the next slide, please? In the ancient world, a person's identity is usually, thank you, a person's identity is usually determined by who he is in the community. Now, Jesus begins with his own identity. He knows he is God's son. He knows in Luke's gospel, you know, should I not be in my father's house? At the time of baptism, we have the voice from heaven that he is God's chosen beloved son. And uh, we find uh, that in the temptations, the question is built around the identity. Because you are the son of God, the temptation is built around Jesus' identity. Jesus knows who he is. There is no doubt. But in the ancient world, because an individual was not just an individual as in the modern sense. You know, we celebrate the independence, the, the, the freedom of the individual. In a country like America, the Statue of Liberty is your basic identity factor, isn't it? It's the, it's the freedom of all kinds of ideas to coexist and flourish together. Uh, that freedom, an individual's freedom, uh, is celebrated in your country. Whereas in Eastern cultures, you are who you are as what the community con conceives of you. So that interplay probably probably has a little relevance here. But let us understand, Jesus was not swayed by the community's affirmation about who he is. Uh, next, he is also assessing the, the impact of his mission. Mark has presented to us Jesus as a very authoritative teacher. People are wondering, who is this? Even the demons yield to him. He teaches with authority, unlike the scribes and the Pharisees. And the scribes and the Pharisees, or the leaders or scholars when they taught, they would be quoting traditions, less, just like you write a research paper. You support your findings on the basis of earlier studies or fresh study. It may be a field study. It may be a lab work. It may be, it may be you are riding on the shoulders of earlier scholars, reputed authorities whose opinions are built on research. Now, this kind of uh, 
uh, riding on the shoulders of others that is authority the as much as they can represent prior scholarship and bring a fresh insight that is how the scholars taught jesus never quoted anyone other than his father's word in the old testament otherwise it was i tell you you have heard i tell you the son of man is even lord of the sabbath the sabbath was made for man you see the authoritative proclamations that jesus made so they were mesmerized by his teaching by his miracles and they have sensed an increasing build of opposition to jesus so only if it is, if he is a person of significance and if his his teaching and presence and his actions as make a stir or create ripples will there be opposition oru droho upadra onnu cheyatha nirupadrava kariyaya oru padeshtava irunnu ennil aaryeshine bodhiyathilla irunnu nalla nalla prasanga unarvu undagunu manushaku bhoodangalil ninnu saukyam varunu ennu nalladana sodram parnjondirunnu she ivada kartavinte aadhigarigathayum kartavil vyaparichirunna devashakti കർത്താവ് അവരുടെ പരമ്പരാഗതമായ രീതികളെ പൂർണ്ണമായിട്ട് അംഗീകരിക്കാതെ അതിനെ വെല്ലുവിളിച്ച തന്റെ രീതികളും കൂടെ വന്നപ്പോൾ മനുഷ്യർക്ക് തന്നെ സംശയം ഇവനാര് ഹു ഈസ് ദിസ് ഡിസൈപ്പിൾസ് ആസ്റ്റ് ആഫ്റ്റർ ദ സ്റ്റില്ലിംഗ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റോം ഹു ദൻ ഈസ് ദിസ് ഈവൻ ദ വിൻസ് ആൻഡ് ദ വേവ്സ് ലിസൺ ടു ഹിം സോ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് എൻ ഇമ്പാക്ട് അസസ്മെന്റ് ദാറ്റ് വി ഫൈൻഡ് ഹിയർ please proceed next up, slide please now uh, the disciples uh, bring about the popular testimony if you compare what the disciples tell about what others say it coincides with uh, chapter 6 chapter 6 uh, what is chapter 6 uh, begins with herod's uh, and the story herod hears about jesus and um, Herod the Tetrarch, the ruler of Galilee, hears about Jesus and uh, he begins to wonder and his intelligence agents give him this report. He is, people, some people say he is a teacher, he is a, he is a prophet, he is Elijah. Some people think he is John come back to life and, you know, or one of the prophets. Now, in John 6, it begins with this john the baptist uh, uh, herod's assessment is in verses 14 and 16 it says he is john the baptist whom herod has beheaded he has come back to life herod is taunted by his bad thoughts of killing or executing john the baptist uh the same set of uh ideas come uh from the mouth of the disciples also who do people say that i am they say you are one of the prophets or elijah or you are john the baptist come back to life so john the baptist intelligence agencies they have made a report and the same thing is what it kind of tallies with the apostolic teams report but we should also know that uh, jesus was accused of being possessed by the demons the beelzebul controversy in chapter 3 that's what the expert said he casts out demons by the prince of demons and we also know that jesus was already rejected by his own community at nazareth so there is a rejection in galilee in chapter 6 verses 1 to 5 and of course in luke's gospel chapter 4 14 30 we have the luke's version of the rejection of jesus at nazareth now this these are the popular answers next slide please so jesus asks his disciples who do you think that i am ജനങ്ങൾ എന്നെ ആരെന്ന് പറയുന്നു എന്നതിന്റെ ഉത്തരം അവർ പറഞ്ഞത് കർത്താവ് ഒരു പ്രവാചകനാണ് എലിയാ എലിയാവാണ് യോഹന്നാൻ മരിച്ചവിടെ ഉയർത്തിനിട്ട് വന്നതാണ് 
എന്നൊക്കെ ജനങ്ങൾ പറയുന്നുണ്ട് ഇതേ അഭിപ്രായം തന്നെയായിരുന്നു ഹെറോദാവിനും തൻ്റെ ഇന്റലിജൻസ് റിപ്പോർട്ടിൽ കൂടെ കിട്ടിയിരുന്നത് എന്നാൽ ജനങ്ങൾ തന്നെ ഒരു പ്രവാചകൻ ഏലിയ ഒരു മഹാപ്രവാചകൻ എന്നൊക്കെ കരുതിയിരുന്നപ്പോൾ കർത്താവ് ശിശുമാർ ചോദിക്കുക നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ ആരെന്ന് പറയും ഫോർ ദ ഡിസൈപ്പിൾസ് ദം സെൽഫ്സ് ദി ഐഡന്റിറ്റി ഓഫ് ജീസസ് വാസ് എ പാസിൽ ബിക്കോസ് ദേ വേർ സ്പെൽ ബൗണ്ട് ബൈ ഇസ് അതോറിറ്റി ബൈ ദ വിസ്ഡം ഓഫ് ഹിസ് ടീച്ചിങ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ചാപ്റ്റർ ടെൻ വിൽ റീഡ് Uh, you know uh, peter tells lord we have left everything to follow you now look the disciples the apostolic team is a small cohort of people who cannot get out of the influence of jesus when jesus called them they left everything and followed him that shows the charismatic authority how jesus word just as it stills the storm or it drives out the evil spirit or when jesus says be clean and then the leprosy leaves the patient if his word is so creative and authoritative that authority or the word or the personality of jesus is also witnessed by the fact that people are attached to him they are attracted to him and some leave everything to follow him they have abandoned themselves they have given their entire loyalties yesterday we concluded by singing this song all to jesus i surrender sampurnamai thangale thanne christuvinu samarpikkatakka vadam aadhigarigadeyulla aagarshaniyadeyulla mattullavare thande vaakku kondu swaadhinikkuvan തന്റെ ആഹ്വാനം തിരസ്കരിക്കുവാൻ മേലാത്ത രീതിയിൽ മനുഷ്യരെ കയറിട്ടു പിടിക്കുന്നതുപോലെ കെട്ടി വലിച്ചു കൊണ്ടു പോകുവാൻ കർത്താവിന്റെ വാക്കുകൾക്കും ആഹ്വാനത്തിനും ശക്തി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു you know uh now peter confesses you are indeed the messiah the son of david the messiah the son of david the king of israel that is how the gospel begins mark's gospel begins with the beginning of the gospel of jesus the messiah and earlier on it's the evil spirits that confess jesus and he silences them we know who you are and jesus silences them he tells them to shut up stern warnings because they were trying to disturb the pace of his movement and ministry now the jesus is crucified with this title as the charge is printed or nailed to the cross Jesus of Nazareth Nazareth the king of the Jews Yehudanmarude rajavana enna aarobanathodu kudiyana puttaarobanathode aanu Yeshuvine krushichathu appo than vishayayanannum allengil barthiyumaayi yetu parayunna pole Davidinte putranana Israelne devam kodukkanirunna Messiah aanu ennullathu ivada mudal സ്പഷ്ടമാക്കപ്പെടുകയാണ് ഇവിടെ മുതൽ സ്പഷ്ടമാക്കപ്പെടുകയാണ് 
a lineage, a dynasty, a chain of successors who God will adopt as his own child, son, and invest with kingship and authority. That is what we find in Psalms 2.7. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Now, the Israelite king is adopted as God's own son who will rule in the place of God. That is the son of God, son of David ideology. Now, that is what, is what we find repeated in Isaiah 9 and 11 and Jeremiah. I'm sorry, that's what I forgot to type down. Uh, I'll correct and send it to you. Now, look, these are... These are all earlier prophecies about a messiah. Now, there was no one single expectation. There were multiple views. Primarily, the word messiah means the anointed one. What is anointing? If you take, I don't know, um, you would have seen Amachis and Apachins do this. You would have seen your Apachins and Amachis take this Ayurvedic oil and you know, nicely massage it over their head and hair and all their body. That kind of spreading, or just like you take some uh, cream, uh, you you apply makeup on your face, and you 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 apply it, uh, smear it. That's that's called anointing. Plastering a wall is called anointing. In Israel, kings were anointed, uh, just like uh, Shaul was anointed and David was anointed. Or Elijah is asked to anoint Yehu by pouring oil. Priests were anointed. The anointing oil flowing from the head to the beard to the garments of Aaron. The priests were anointed. And of course from uh, Isaiah 61, the prophet who is indwelt by the spirit is also seen as anointed one. Now, there were multiple expectations. Some people thought a Davidic Messiah will come. There were others who thought like the Essenic scholars or the pious people who lived by the caves or you know, by the settlements around the Dead Sea Scroll whose writings were preserved in the caves uh, around the Dead Sea. Uh, these are called Qumran scholars. They thought there is a Davidic Messiah, there will be a priestly Messiah because they thought the temple was all corrupted. They were also waiting for a prophet uh, or some people say they were even waiting for an angelic Messiah. There is a little bit of confusion on what exactly they were anticipating. They, they felt one Messiah was not sufficient. There needs political correction, there needs temple worship correction. So they were made, waiting for multiple end time agents to be sent by God, appointed by God. No, all kinds. Psalms of Solomon has a similar understanding about a David Messiah or the Son of God coming. So let's go to, to, the, to the next slide. Now when Peter confessed Jesus to be the uh, Messiah, uh, can we progress to the, uh, yes, thank you. That's it, thank you. When Peter confessed Jesus to be the Messiah, Jesus here doesn't affirm it or reject it. He immediately goes on to correct it. Whereas in Matthew's gospel, it is said, Jesus affirms it. It is not flesh and blood that is revealed it to you. It is my father in heaven. Here, there is no such affirmation. Jesus immediately goes to correct it or bring in a set of filters, a new template to understand the kingdom of God and the king who is going to re reign over. Look at verse 31. He began to teach them. So the passion predictions in chapter 831 then, of course, in nine, uh, uh, chapter 9, um, where is it, 9.30? Yes, 9.30, and I think chapter 10, verse 32 following. These, a series of 
teachings, a lecture series, as if a professor announces a new um, lecture series. Uh, he began to teach them the three passion predictions. What does Jesus begin to teach them? Yes, I am the king of Israel. Now, this is a big shift from the prophetic view. The prophet is a herald, a proclaimer, like Elijah, like John the Baptist, one who prepares the way. He has a message, but the message is different from the prophet. Whereas when Jesus accepts he is the Messiah, he not only becomes the herald or the proclaimer of the kingdom of God, the rule of God, but he says, look, you see the king himself. But what sort of a king is Jesus? No, if you look at the three passion predictions, I have listed for you some common features. Number one, he will be rejected. Next, he will be handed over. He will, that comes in the last passion prediction. He will be hand, rejected by Israel's leaders. He will be delivered up or handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him. They will abuse him. They will insult him. They will spit on his face. They will kill him. But on the third day, he will be raised to life again. This kind of a template of a suffering, rejected Messiah has always been the scandal of the gospel, an offense of the gospel, which people have not found it easy to accept. The disciples could not accept it. We'll see this. The early Jewish people were not waiting for a crucified, suffering Messiah. If at all they anticipated a messiah, they were looking for someone who will slice the Romans, kick them out and deliver God's people like David did or like uh, the Maccabean uh, uh, revolters did. Uh, so that's the kind of a messiah who will set Israel free from domination. Moses led his people in out of slavery. It was not by fighting, it was by the word of God. Now here they were expecting not just Moses or a Moses-like prophet. There is a David component. The David component is warfare. It is political kingdom. It's kingship. It is that it is, it is going to be a clash with Rome, which had already occupied uh, Palestine. You know, he was a, it was a vassal state. So to speak of Israel's uh, king, the son of David, to be rejected, to be handed over, to be mocked, abused, insulted, killed, that is a tragedy. It's an insult. It injures their national pride. They were not waiting for a resurrection because uh, for them, resurrection was only a symbol of the nation's rebirth into its glory. They didn't Next slide, please. That's why in 831 we read, Peter takes Jesus aside and tells him, stop uttering nonsense. He rebuked him. The word is the same. The same. He rebuked him. He strongly warned him. Now look at Peter. Peter's confidence that his understanding of the apostolic team's comprehension of the identity of Jesus as the Messiah. It is like, you know, the, the southern tribes and the northern tribes coming together to proclaim David as their king. Here is the nation represented by the apostolic team uh, voiced uh, by Peter. You dare not say you are going to be rejected. 
no, don't say that. No, imagine a coach coming to the players who are at the verge of giving up, you know, pumping confidence into them saying, no, you can do it, you will do it. You are smart, you are able, you will do it. You see, that kind of a, a strong, positive energy pumping perhaps is what Peter is trying to do. Jesus looks at Peter and turns and looks at the disciples and he tells, away from me, Satan. This is the problem of the, the, uh, the double vision. Peter has confessed Jesus to be the Messiah, but sees him like, you know, trees walking. It's not a perfectly adjusted vision. He sees, but he still doesn't st see properly. He's looking at it through the glasses of human beings. You know, that's, that's the thing that we need to be listened to. Get behind me, Satan. This is exactly what Jesus told the temper, tempter on the Mount of Temptation. Satan comes to Jesus and tells, he showed him all the glories of all the kingdoms and tells him, I will give all these things to you. A liar's promise should never be believed. If only you will turn to worship me. He has come to deceive the Son of God. What a strategist he is. What a trap he had set for Jesus. If only you will worship Satan, all this that he has illegitimately claimed will be handed over to you. Jesus tells Satan, away from me, Satan. Get out! out. It's the same rebuke that we find, except that in the temptation narrative, Satan came to Jesus and Jesus knew it was only Satan. Now he's voicing his opinion through the prince of the apostles, Peter. What does Jesus tell them? Why would he call him? Get behind me, Satan. And look, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Here is a clash of ideologies. A clash of ideologies. Peter's template of understanding the Messiah is satanic. Why is it satanic? Because it originates from human political thought. It is not built on God's revelation. Jesus brings God's revelation. Jesus is God's word and his own explanation or envisioning his portrait of the kingdom of God is what God wants him to communicate. But here somebody says, you don't fit into my formula, so you better correct yourself. And that is a satanic conflict. Exorcism so far has been deliverance of people from demonic powers, demonic powers which destabilize people, dehumanize people, take away their ability to perform as normal, loving, caring, communicating, integrated beings in the community. Satan's influence distorts their understanding, keeps speaking to their minds evil ideas, and so they are completely distorted. They are disconnected. But look at this subtle strategy. Here is a team that follows Jesus. Here is a team who understands Jesus to be unique and different, but they failed to submit to, they failed to submit to Jesus' version of what it means to be the king. We will find in chapter 9, verses 14 to 29, 
an exorcism taking place. Now, if Peter has been exorcised, we'll find another exorcism taking place. Where, you know, where the disciples who are unable to cast out the demons asked Jesus, why could we not do it? The answer is one, you need a lot of prayer for it. The answer in the middle is this, you know, the young man, the boy's father says, sir, I, your disciples are not able to do it. And Jesus says, and he says, if you can do something, you do something about it. Yeah, you can. If you have faith, all things are possible. And the man says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. What do we find here? Demonic possession, while it distorts some people, it weakens the faith of others in their prayer life, in their faith. So when Jesus casts out the demon and demonstrates to the apostolic team, the kingdom's combat postures, they are taught to believe and to exercise faith with prayer, prayer and faith. So the church is demonically attacked when it is weakening in its faith, when it does not pray as it ought to pray. You know, Jesus is actually coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration. And you will know in Luke's gospel, it makes it very clear. Luke 9, it makes it very clear. Jesus went up to a mountain with three of his disciples to pray. As they were praying, he was transfigured. We'll come to that passage again. And the disciples became sleepy. The stupor of the church. The church sleeps at the time of prayer. The church sleeps sometimes when revelation takes place. You know, in the Mount of Transfiguration, what happens? Elijah and Moses come and discuss with Jesus. And what do they discuss? Luke says they are dis discussing his exodus. Exodus is the moving out, the journey, the way theology of what? Of God setting his people free from slavery in the land of Egypt. Here, the prophets, Elijah and Moses, confer with Jesus. And the discussion is his exodus, his death, his resurrection. That is being discussed. And the church is sleepy. The church doesn't hear properly. There is a voice, the voice from heaven. This is my beloved son. Pay heed to him. Listen to him. Did they hear? They are in a half wake, sleepy atmosphere. You know, earlier days we used to take notes uh, in uh, notes in uh, lectures. And you know, when the lecture became very interesting, read it, understand what I'm going to say. We would be writing notes, lecture notes, and sometimes the pen may goes from one end of the paper to the other end, and then you wake up. You see, you you are in a state of stupor. You are dozing off. Now that's. That is the condition of the disciples. Jesus is present. The word of God is being explained in all its power and authenticity. There is the voice of God. It is a prayer worship session and a sleepy church. That is, that is how Satan corrupts the faith community. Its prayer becomes sleepy. Its ears become dull. Even when the very voice of God comes, even when the word of God is interpreted by the three greatest bearers of God's word, Moses, Elijah, Jesus himself, the word of God, the church is sleepy. Prayer time. It's only by faith and through prayer 
that these kinds will be cast away. God is calling us to pray, listen to his word as God intended it to be communicated. Read it through the eyes of Jesus. Listen to God's voice and then the cluttering of our minds will be cleared. We will see with clarity. We will begin to see people as people. You know, what then is the transfiguration? Chapter 9 and verse 1, Jesus tells them, there are some people standing here who will not suffer death till they see the kingdom of God come with power. And in chapter 9 verses 2 to 13, what we find is Jesus giving them a dress rehearsal of the, of the resurrection. You know, uh, in our school days, we would have great functions, the school day, the annual day. And sometimes, you know, the number of people who can be accommodated in the auditorium far exceeds uh, uh, its, its capacity. So what do they do? We, in my school, we used to have a dress rehearsal, a full dress rehearsal of the event. What happens then? The, the in-house community that hosts it, the school community, is privileged to enjoy the grand function a day before the big day, the big event. And the next day, it's the invited guests, parents, and the dignitaries who are privileged to observe it, watch it. What Jesus gave the disciples here is a dress rehearsal. Nobody saw the resurrection. They saw the empty tomb and they saw the risen Christ. They touched him. They ate with him. They heard him. He walked with them, taught them. He fed them. But here, as they were praying, they saw what would happen. The word of God, the power of God, reaching its intended climax, the king in all his glory, the resurrection. So the teaching of Jesus and the, the vision of the transfiguration are intended to transform the understanding of, of Jesus, transform the understanding of the disciples, sorry, understanding of the disciples to clarify their thoughts, to enable them to see clearly. Now we look at chapters 8, 9, and 10. They don't yet see clearly. They will see clearly only, only in verse 7 of chapter 16. That's when they believe. That is the impact of resurrection. The dress rehearsal did not lead them to confidence. Now let's look at the last slide. You see, the clash of templates, the clash of ideologies. You, Jesus means something, God means something, but we have a different set of receptacles with which receptors with which we misunderstand. You know, there is a life saving message sent. During the time of the Second World War, they used wireless and coding, isn't it? A life-saving message is sent. Suppose the recipient interprets it wrongly. What happens? That's what is happening here. The kingdom that Jesus envisaged, what not a clash of metals, swords and shields and spears and arrows, bruising people, shedding rivers of blood, conquering people, dehumanizing people, leading to massive enslavement and domination, the, 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 the distortion of local cultures, people being looted and impoverished. No, the kingdom of God is not like the Roman kingdom, not like any other empire. It's not like any of our modern empires or kingdoms, big nation states. No. No. To be the king 
is to be rejected, ridiculed, despised, mocked, handed over, killed, and him to be raised back to life. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, the suffering Messiah who will be vindicated by his father, you follow in my patterns. Not to grab, not to seek, not to push, not to subdue, not to belittle, not to conquer, not to grab, not to amass wealth, not to throw your weight upon other people, not to treat people as if they were slaves or chattel slaves or property. No. It is to deny yourself to take up your cross and to follow him. Kingdoms, politics. Politics is the exchange of power in a community, isn't it? The kingdom's politics, the kingdom's dynamics. That's how we engage with one another. You know, the kingdom's uh, style of operation, the way you live in the kingdom, the way you propagate the kingdom, witness the kingdom, the way you serve the king is self-denial, sacrifice, it's service. It is placing oneself at the altar, suffering voluntarily to say no to us, to take away our petty paradigms and cast them away, to allow the Messiah to mold us, reshape our thinking. It is to lose our life. To lose our life. We live in a world which, in which ideologies conflict. It may be the corporate world. It may be the global village. It may be globalization. It may be making international mission bodies, it may be seeking to be the largest, the most sought after, the wealthiest, uh, the, the mega thing, the biggest church, the largest number of flow followers or viewership. We borrow from our corporate world, our society, patterns of significance. We look at it, which don't fit into the Messiah's pattern. He came to give his life. He came to be poured out. He came not to push. He came to serve. He came and lost his life. And Jesus calls us to walk with him in this journey to Jerusalem, where what he predicted will be realized. He invites us to join his team by allowing Jesus, God's word, the living voice of God, our worship and prayers, our communion with Christ, to reform our value systems. That is very, very painful. That's what we want to share, Kof. That's where, you know, we have the pull. The doctor wants to pull out your tooth. But then we pull. He said, no, no, no. It's painful. But that is to be gifted with corrected vision. That is to have ears which hear. That is to hear, see, and understand the voice from heaven. The Father's voice is this. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Follow him. 
that is discipleship now there are a lot of lot of practical aspects to what this self denial what this taking up the cross what is sacrifice what is service what is putting others be ahead of us means in day to day life we look at some more samples in the coming days from mark 9 and 10 let us pray and ask the lord to open our eyes a fatah that our eyes ears will be opened the cluttered minds will be clarified the satanic imposture of human value systems and ideologies which do not originate in the mind of god our own idolatrous value systems will be challenged and god will make the way of the lord worthy worthy of being chosen a trek that we would commit ourselves to all the way even to jerusalem and golgotha so that we will participate in his resurrection in his resurrection baptism is that the lord supper points to it send it baptism is when we are fused with this jesus story of dying with him being buried with him and being raised with him when we break the bread this is what we do we remember him we have fellowship or communion with him and we proclaim his death till his coming as we anticipate and pray maranatha our lord come so thank you may god's holy spirit continue to speak to you uh, clear uh, some of your questions and even challenge us challenges on the ways in which we have been trekking so far thank you very much uh, passive brother philip i am willing to take questions if there are any um, i'm sorry i took a little bit more time today but if there are any questions i'll be glad to take them up. Thank you.